This is to call to order the Wilmot Public Library District Board of Trustees meeting for Tuesday, July, January 21st at 7.35 in the staff lounge. Can we have a roll call? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Trustee Secretary, Trust Trustee Barshis. Trustee Barshis, yes. Barshis. Trustee Fishman. Yes. Trustee Johnson, absent. Trustee Riddle. Here. Trustee Rogers. Here. Trustee Wolf. Here. And Trustee McDonald. Here. Uh, today we do not have any public present. We do have one of the uh, League of Women Voters observers. So there will be no public comment. There is no, pub no one to do a public comment today. So behind number three, section number two, one, you've got the minutes from Tuesday, November 19th meeting. Is there a motion? I will move that we approve the minutes from the Tuesday, November 19th, 2019 board meeting. Is there a second? Second. So, yeah. Okay. So, Trustee Wolf has moved and Trustee Barshish has seconded that we approve the November 19th, 2019 board minutes. Is there any discussion? Okay, given that there's no discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Nay. Any opposed? The minutes pass unanimously. Oh, I'm sorry. Turn that off. Is that Harry Potter? No, Harry no. Potter won't be here till tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we have no presentations, so we will switch it over to Trustee Rogers for the Treasurer's Report. Okay. November and December reports are in your packet. Uh, the November revenue was $27,000 and change in general fund interest, uh, just below 20000 in real estate taxes and $3,600 in miscellaneous income. The December uh, income was uh, about $50,000 from the Kenilworth Library District, uh, $18,000 in general fund interest, $14,601 in gifts and donations, and just under 14000 in real estate taxes. As you can see, those are not big tax receipt months. Um, the uh, majority of the expenses also were within the boundaries of the budget. The exceptions are noted. The principal ones had to do with periodical payments that occur uh, early in the year um, and are not repeated during the entire year. Um, there is nothing extraordinary in either November or December's financial reports. Are there any questions? Okay, then I, I suggest that just for clarity and simplicity, we act separately on the November and December um, uh, checks or bills and salaries. I move approval of the November 2019 bills and salaries. I'll second. Trustee Rogers has moved the approval of the bills and salaries for the month of November 2019, and Trustee Wolf has seconded. Any discussion? Can we have a no discussion? Once, twice. Can we have a roll call? Sure. Trustee All those in Mm -hmm. Trustee Barshis, yes. Trustee Fishman? Yes. Trustee Johnson, absent. Trustee Riddle? Yes. Trustee Rogers? Yes. Trustee Wolf? Yes. And Trustee McDonald? Yes. Uh, I move approval of the December 2019 bills and salaries. I second. Uh, <clears throat> Trustee Rogers has moved the approval of the bills. <coughs> Salaries for the month of December 2019, and so Trustee Riddle has seconded. Is there any discussion? 
I move the approval <coughs> of the bills and salaries for the month of December 2019. Trustee, Trustee Barshas, yes. Trustee Fishman? Yes. Trustee Johnson, absent. <coughs> Excuse me, Trustee Riddle? Yes. Trustee Rogers? Yes. Trustee Wolf? Aye. And Trustee McDonald? Aye. Okay. We're going to move to the director's report. Director Austin? Okay. Um, good evening, all. Um, mm -hmm. It gives me great pleasure to introduce my director's report by including an item that is not behind um, tab five in the director's report. Um, in the course of this past month, the library has learned that it has earned a national accolade from Library Journal. You may recall last November when we met, um, the library received its first star rating from Library Journal. Mm -hmm. um, and that placed the library in the top three and a half percent in the country in terms of that national recognition. Um, the library is no longer a three star library. The library is now a five star library. Mm -hmm. um, the, the metrics that define this, mm -hmm. Um, include a number of output measures and statistical um, data that is reported um, nationally. And that data includes the, the metrics that this is based on are visits per capita, um, circulation, program attendance, electronic resource circulation, public computer use, and Wi-Fi sessions per capita. Hmm. Um, so this is the second year in a row that our library has stood out in terms of our statistical measures and library journals um, uh, survey. Um, there are 6,333 public libraries in the nation, and Wilmette Library is one of 261 libraries that qualify as a star library. Um, so as I said, that places us in the top 4% of, of libraries in the country based on these measures. And in the state of Illinois, there are 17 libraries that received a star rating. Um, Illinois is one of the better represented um, states in the nation for the quality of its libraries. Um, a number of uh, states in New England also fall into that category as well. Um, seven libraries in Illinois of that 17 also earned five star ratings. So we've got really great libraries in the, in the region. Um, and we're in, we're in good company. Uh, Cook Memorial Library in Libertyville hmm. is included as a five-star library, as is Elmhurst, Fountaindale in Bolingbrook, uh, Lenark, a, a small library on the uh, far west side over um, just south of like the Galena area, uh, Naperville, hmm. Northbrook, and Wilmette. So um, we are delighted, um, and I, I think it is a credit to our community for their high use of the library because these are all statistical measures, as it is a credit to the board and staff for supporting all of the initiatives that we bring forward. Mm -hmm. um, so we are really we're honored and, and we're thrilled to, to share that information with you this evening. Um, we're working up a, a press release so that we can celebrate that and uh, let the community know that um, uh, their efforts are rewarded and we'll continue to, to support them. Good. Good. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Could we have a five-star party? <laughs> yeah. five party? And let, you know, and you could come talk to the trustees and give your ideas and just sort of learn a little bit about the library. Just the five-star party is that what they've helped make it in terms of staff. We could certainly consider that. Okay. All right. Anthony, how did you find out about it? Like, were you, do you get surveyed? Do you, how, did, how do they, how do we know that we qualify? So we support, you know, as, as you know, you approve the Illinois Public Library um, data, the IPLAR report, and that is a, an account of all of our statistical measures. So that gets reported to the Public Library Data Service. Um, and all of that information is then compiled and then run through these analytics, and that's where the information comes from. Um, Library Journal did not reach out to us. Um, we happened to find it simply by leafing through the magazine and going, oh my gosh, we're in here. This is amazing. So, yeah. Congrats. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, okay, so um, into the actual items that um, contribute to that. Um, so behind tab, tab five, you will see uh, the director's report, and we open with uh, the strategic plan progress updates as we do. And um, a couple items that I would like to highlight for you include um, some objectives on uh, page two. Um, I want to call your attention to um, objective 2-2. Two, two. Mm -hmm. um, there's a mention further about this in our collection section, and we've been talking about this for a while, but in the event that you happen to, to step onto the mezzanine in, in the near future, you're going to see that things are in a, in a period of transition right now. As I've been talking about the past couple months, 
um, our periodical collection is now being barcoded so that it's easier for patrons to access and for staff to track use of, of our periodical collection. Um, as part of that, we're right-sizing that, that periodical collection and trying to promote its use and make it more accessible. Uh, the periodical collection, as you may know, is currently located in three locations. The current periodicals are in the periodical room um, at the front of the library, just above the vestibule entrance on the second floor. Um, back issues are found in two locations, on the mezzanine, which is um, just on the south side of the building above the reference area, and in the compact shelving storage on the lower level, which is behind a door um, across from uh, the Friends book down, Books Down Under store. Um, we have been analyzing this collection for quite a while, and um, in an effort to promote its use, as I said, we're trying to right-size it. We'd like to get a lot of those materials that are relatively unknown to the public on the mezzanine uh, placed back up in the periodicals room. Um, and to get rid of the materials that are no longer of immediate use to the community out of the compact shelving room and make more space for storage in that, that area. Um, so in order to do that, yeah. <laughs> um, we're in the process of shifting, and the long-term goal is to make um, more seating options available on the mezzanine. So by freeing up the, the storage uh, there, we'll be able to move some of the reference collections over further to the north side of, of that area, and the south side of the mezzanine will, will soon become a seating area mm -hmm. once those stacks can come down. Um, it'll probably take us a quarter to get through this, but in the event that you happen to observe some activity over there, that's what's, that's what's cooking. So are we reducing the size uh, and the number of periodicals also? Well, in, yet, in, yes. Yet. I mean, the short answer is yes. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of those decisions are unfortunately being made for the library. Um, oh. We've had another five titles that were discontinued or are no longer in publication and print. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. this is a trend that we've been reporting for some time now, that this periodical readership is, is not what it used to be. Right. And a lot of publishers are opting to move their collections over to a digital-only service. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an, another thing that's driving that decision. Um, retention is also part of this. Um, a lot of our, our back issues simply uh, do not get used if they're not th the front-facing periodical. Periodicals, by definition, are ephemeral. They're really only used for the week, month, or quarter that they're, that they're posted. Um, and then interest kind of wanes in them unless they're used for a research purpose. And the overwhelming majority of the periodicals that we subscribe to are available in an electronic resource that are immediately searchable. So accessibility is a big part of it too. We try to promote use of the electronic collections. Um, so our goal is to kind of right size that. A number of our periodicals, we would have a retention period of maybe two years on those, and we just don't have the space or the demand for us to have that kind of collection. So that's why we've been uh, diminishing those. Excuse me, can they access back articles for most of those periodicals through our database? Yes. In terms of reference? That's correct. Okay. Uh, not, in, not in every case, but I would say the overwhelming majority of the cases, mm -hmm. yes. And um, we are certainly not the only library to retain these titles, so it's not as though our patrons no longer have access to these collections. Um, we've been tracking data on, on the, the titles that we've been discontinuing of our own volition, mm -hmm. um, as well as the ones that we're trying to, you know, adjust our retention period on, um, and we're certainly not reducing anything that is in demand. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no, there's really no consistency to, because there isn't really consistency in the way that magazines are published. Right. You've got weeklies, bi-weeklies, mm -hmm. monthlies, the special issues, mm -hmm. bi-monthlies, mm -hmm. quarterlies, and, and there's variations, and they'll change it at the drop of a hat. Um, and as a result, and, and then you've got different sizes of periodicals. It is it is a beast to maintain that collection. So kudos to, to the recycle. team that does it. And yes, absolutely, <laughs> the ecological impact is another thing. Um, Anthony, but, you mentioned you bar, you're barcoding them. Um, yes. Is there any way for a patron to look at the magazine, physical magazine and know if it's also accessible, as Lisa just asked? as part of the database. That is something that we're trying to work with on a broader scale, too. Um, so to advertise the availability of that title in a database. Um, the challenge there is that retention of those kind of shifts over time, too. So it's a thing to stay on top of. So you can't, like, color code the, the, but, the label or something and know that that way it's also available. Yeah, we would, have to, we would have to manually keep track okay. of, is that title still in that database? Mm -hmm. Um, but that is definitely a way of trying to promote digital access to the collections, too, mm -hmm. is to say, if you can't get the book or the, the magazine right now, have you tried looking online for it? Okay. Yeah. yeah, to Lisa's point, just to break in for a second, I had a <clears throat> only the cover of a magazine with 
something on the cover that I wanted to uh, research and take a look at, and it, it was like three years old or four years old, something like that. So I did take it to one of the librarians downstairs, and she found it online and showed me how to do it, and so, you know, it is possible. And we also um, have access to an outstanding university, just a stone's throw from here, and they have a deep collection as well. Um, as well as I've mentioned at the top of my report, a lot of really great libraries in the area too that will also have supplemental collections that we have access to either through CCS or through interlibrary loan. So I still feel that our periodicals collection is first rate and um, we're following industry trends in terms of how we're managing that collection and trying to promote its access right now. So um, space utilization is, is definitely something that is of, of prime interest. If you have been in the library um, like yesterday, for example, um, it was yes. a busy day here with um, a lot of the students um, sure. preparing for finals. So um, we, um, we want to make sure that, we, that we're using our space appropriately, that we've got tables and chairs for those that need to do their studying, and um, that we're, we're taking advantage of all the, the free space that we've got. Um, so we remain committed to that. Um, just below that in Objective 3.2, um, you'll see that um, the youth services staff is designing a social story to help youth and adults with disabilities to feel more comfortable when they're visiting the library. So they're creating a social story, which is a series of images and descriptions which help to prepare a first-time visitor uh, by showing what the library looks like and what they can expect when they come to visit the library. That's and we're going to promote this on the website. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, also related to our efforts to promote more inclusivity, uh, Objective 3-4, um, we're adding a, a new book list with recommended books about gender expression and gender identity. This is something new for us. It's going to we'll go in our bi bibliography section. Um, as well as we're also developing um, story times that, that have own voices, uh, stories in them. Um, so uh, uh, the read aloud books, I'll just, I'll just read the sentence. We're also sharing read aloud books with uh, with each other that feature a diverse representation of race, gender, and ability with a focus on own voices. Own voices are, are books that um, uh, that means that the author is writing um, as a main, a main character who's part of a marginalized group, um, and we're trying to promote inclusivity by, um, by doing more of these own voices. We've got a display on that. Um, it's just it's part of our EDI initiative that, um, that we're just going to continue with, so I wanted to share that information with you. Mm -hmm. Um, moving forward to our programs, um, January 2nd is the kickoff of our Winter Reading Club. Um, our Winter Reading Program is generously supported by the Friends of the Wilmette Library. Um, we've got a program for both adults and teens as well as youth. Um, we've got special branding this year and there's a banner across uh, the uh, public service desks on the first and second floor to promote um, the program and we're seeing more signups than we have at this early stage um, than we did last year. So we think that banner is helping to, to promote that. Um, so basically, uh, the program is um, just listen or read um, three books, uh, return your log, and um, when you come back in, you can select a book um, from the winter reading card with the materials that are donated by the friends. Um, the, the objective of our winter reading program is to support literacy and to promote reading. Um, so there's no tchotchkes or special plastic prizes. You, yeah, you're rewarded nice. with a book. I really like that. Yeah. yeah. And I am um, certainly publicizing it in the condo, and people are taking to it quite well. Nice. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, <clears throat> the other bit of news um, that I really want to celebrate is um, our staff this past fall, um, our One Book Everybody Reads Committee, mm -hmm. um, selected their title, and this month they've announced their title. Um, American Dirt by Janine Cummins is our, is our selection, um, and we made this decision months ago. Um, however, uh, that title is fast becoming one of the most talked about titles of 2020 and has garnered an awful, an awful lot of attention from a number of publications and today just earned um, Oprah's seal of approval and has been selected as one of her book club selections. Okay. Um, so we anticipate that this is going to be a hotly popular book. Yep. Um, the book was in fact released today. Yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, there is a, a holds list on this title right now. We have, I, I forget how many copies of it, uh, many. 
<laughs> many, many copies. Um, if you are interested in participating, and we hope you are, we'd like to encourage you to get on the wait list for it right now. Um, and it's available in multiple formats, not just the, uh, the plain print copy. Not to put a plug in for the bookstall, but they called me today to say that they had copies in. So. And the bookstall will definitely be a party to our, our programming as well. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have more information about our program um, as this wears on. We, we typically have our author event in May, and that is our, that is our plan. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep you posted. You're going to hear a lot more about it in the coming months. All right, what else can I share with you here? I think the biggest news of, of my report this month comes towards the end of my report when I get to talk about and celebrate the staff. Um, a, lot of, a lot's been going on in the last couple months um, on the human resources front. Um, we've, we've had a number of retirements. Um, our first retirement announcement was in November. Um, our business manager, Barbara Griffiths, um, announced her retirement. Um, we're excited for her. Um, her role is a, is a really important and critical one, um, so we wanted to make sure that we did right by her and, and were able to preserve her legacy. Um, so we, we went through that whole um, uh, review process, and um, we were excited to announce that we have selected our successor. Um, the current assistant finance director for the village of, uh, the village of Wilmette, uh, John Risco, is going to be our new finance manager, and John mm -hmm. will be working full-time and he'll op occupy an office in the administrative offices, um, and he will begin on February 17th. So the day before our next board meeting will be mm -hmm. John's first day. Mm -hmm. um, and John will regularly attend our, our monthly meetings and finance committee meetings as well. So we'll have an ample opportunity to get to know mm -hmm. him um, here at this, at this meeting. Who does he work under, do you know? Um, Melinda Malloy is, is his current oh, supervisor. Okay. Um, as you all may have heard, in December, our adult services manager, Betty Georgie, who just celebrated 25 years yep. with the library, mm -hmm. announced her retirement as well. Um, the applications for her position were accepted through this past Friday, and we're currently in the process of reviewing our applications. Um, we have over 20, mm -hmm. um, and I'm really excited by what I'm seeing there. So we're looking hopeful to the future about what her successor is as in store for us. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep you apprised of that process as we go through that. Um, we love to celebrate um, internal promotions, and I'm happy to report that in November, our part-time circulation assistant, Amy Young, accepted a full-time interlibrary loan assistant position. Um, that was a position that was vacated um, uh, um, earlier this past year. So we're, we're excited to have Amy in that capacity. She's been working with the library for over 13 years. Um, in community services, our graphic designer, Sarah Rose, who's been part-time mm -hmm. with us since uh, 2017, um, she accepted full-time hours as well, um, and that can only mean great things for our branding and promotions going forward. She's done a lot of really outstanding work this past yeah, year for us. She does. <laughs> Um, we just hired a new shelver, uh, Peter Sandstrom. Um, he's a PhD, a retired teacher from Minnesota. Um, we're thrilled to have him here, and if you're interested over there on the bulletin board, you can learn a little bit more about Peter. There's a, a picture of him and, and a bio. Mm -hmm. And then we had a lot of big news in youth services that we just announced this past week. So um, we did some internal uh, movement within the department. Um, our part-time librarian, Jennifer Lee, will transition to full-time. Um, she's been with the library for over six years and has been instrumental in growing our world language collection and programs for school-aged children and our STEAM lab. Our full-time librarian, Janet Peel, is taking on additional responsibilities now as our newly created maker librarian. Um, she has been instrumental in launching our Maker Fest, um, which last year drew over 400 people to the library. Um, and our next event will be on Leap Day, mm. and we're expecting a big turnout for that as well. We'll talk more about that at our next meeting. Um, so we're thrilled to have Janet in that capacity, and she's working right now on implementing our, our 3D printing program. And I'm also excited to report that our full-time librarian, Lisa Bigelow, has accepted the role of being our assistant manager of youth mm. services. We haven't had that support level in, assist, uh, in um, uh, youth services, so we're thrilled to have her. Um, and Lisa has been with the library for 13 years as well, and she's been instrumental in um, expanding the depth uh, of our youth literature collection. So mm -hmm. we're thrilled to have her in that role. 
staff. So a lot of a lot of staffing uh, developments going on right now. Um, I'll also point out too that we celebrated a number of staff anniversaries in the fourth quarter. Um, including a, a number of staff that have been with the library over 20 years. And I think that's a pattern that we've been seeing over time. Uh, Wilmette Library is a great place to work, and our staff are loyal and dedicated to their service. Um, Debbie Thompson celebrated 24 years with the library, Angela wow. Travert, 26, Louise Nydorf, 27, and Amy Barrow, 37. Mm. Um, you'll also see um, we had a, a posting on our Instagram there of Betty and Barbara Goodman. Mm -hmm. uh, Barbara celebrated 30 years with the library mm -hmm. uh, back in November. So mm -hmm. um, we've got a really great and experienced team with us. Um, and that's one of our great virtues and values that we can uh, celebrate with the community. It also means that there's an inevitability at some point here we're going to start seeing some retirements and some roles that are going to some big shoes to fill. Um, that, I think, is, is kind of my concise summary of my report. Do you all have any questions or comments for me about library activities in November, December, or anything else? Sometimes I'm working hard. Months that sometimes tend to be slower for many people. So congrats, and thank you for your dedication and your HR team for your, their dedication. We're lucky to have Mike. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, too. Okay. Thank you. Any idea of what the staff training is going to be? The staff training. For your staff day. Uh, staff, uh, staff development day is uh, March 20th. Um, we currently don't have a defined theme around the day. Uh, the committee is, is at work uh, developing the program right now, so um, we'll, we'll have all those details tidied up probably before the, the next meeting in February, so I'll give you a full report on what the plan is at the February 18th meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you have anything from ILA? Oh, I do. Um, <laughs> since I've had two months to uh, put things together. Not, I didn't go overboard. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, back in, in November, the ILA had a posting that talked about how green is your library. And there were some uh, interesting articles as well as reference books that could be used. So when we get to our strategic planning, uh, that may be an area where we'd like to look, look into it, and uh, there should be some help there. Uh, one kind, just a, not a funny thing, but kind of, uh, it says, meet the bookmobile's cousin. So we have our bookmobile. This, in the Brooklyn Public Library, is a cookmobile. Mm. And it travels, it's on wheels, and it teaches public library patrons how to cook. So that's an interesting use of uh, what we have, which is our bookmobile. Um, Are they getting see. subsidies from the, uh, in terms of public health? Or? It didn't say. I would think. Yeah. In terms of. I, you could probably find out. But. Um, let's see. Oh, there was one inter this was an interesting article, just the way they put it. It's uh, public libraries versus the echo chamber. This is something that we are actually addressing at this library, and what that means is that you're constantly talking with somebody or tweeting or doing whatever with other people who are like you, and so you get affirmation in this echo chamber is how they describe it. And the couple of the things that we've had uh, earlier encouraged people to learn about other people's ideas and how they thought and to con you know, converse with them and perhaps broaden their own uh, feelings and categories. Um, this article contends that the echo chamber can be very harmful because you don't look outside of the box, your own box, the box that you've made. And then um, an interesting one about law and liability uh, for fake news and what the librarians can and can't do that, do about that when patrons want information. Um, there are lawyer librarian fields actually with, with actual questions about that. How far can a librarian go? 
in um, talking with people who are uh, perhaps steeped on, on fake news, and that's a real touchy situation. It's not one I'm going to ever, you know, make a pronouncement on, but it's out there, and it's difficult, I would think, if you're an, a librarian and you have somebody come up and just, you know, spout all this stuff that maybe you know isn't really correct according to what's out there. But that's a difficult area to go into. I don't think they've done some workshop. They, haven't they done a workshop on turf and here? They've done a couple in terms of how to identify fake news. Mm-hmm. Those things can be helpful if they get the right, if they get the people in there who need to learn about it. Right. about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those were the ones that I thought. Um, I'll add one other thing from mm -hmm. ILA. Um, mm -hmm. It is the season for legislative meetups. Um, oh, right. as, is, as you'll see in, mm -hmm. in the important dates section here. Um, for our region, President's Day is always the day that our legislators come to, to talk with um, library representatives. So President's Day is Monday, February 17th, and that's the day before our next board meeting. Mm -hmm. um, if you are interested in participating in the legislative meetup, um, let me know at your first convenience, and we'll make sure that we get you registered for the event. That's early, isn't it? And, um, it's early in the morning, and it's never, and it's always snowing. It usually snows that day. Um, <laughs> it's like 7? Seven? 7.45 Five. is when the breakfast begins. Um, the program begins um, at 8.30, I believe. At the it's Reading about Club 45 minutes Park. longer than we expect it to be together. <laughs> <laughs> but always a good time, so um, I, I encourage you all to participate if you can. All right, Finance Committee. Okay, Committees at Finance. Staff Providers, in terms of What's next? Uh, we will need to conduct a poll to see what times would be appropriate to consider scheduling a meeting to continue our work on finance committee policies, oh. or board, board policies that the finance committee is reviewing. Um, I don't have any specific suggestions for dates. At the so the the action I think that we had at our finance committee meeting um, at, on uh, December third was the committee directed Dr. Rogers and I to um, review uh, the policy suggestions that are brought forward by the committee members um, and to discuss recommendations for that policy and then um, make a draft proposal of that and bring it before the committee for a review. Um, so. Dr. Rogers and I are going to meet and, and talk about policy here in the near future, and then at that point we'll schedule a meeting uh, to discuss that. So does something have to happen in the interim, just a note to all the finance members to please review and get back to you by a set day? Well, I'll, I'll remind everyone that if you've got content that you would like to bring forward, um, please do so, and we'll incorporate that, uh, those recommendations. We did have a lot of discussion about that at the meeting on the 3rd, um, but... Um, you know, I would just encourage you to continue to review that policy and uh, those policies. And if you've got any suggestions for us, let us know, and, and we'll um, we'll work that up. Does that yeah. follow what your understanding was, Ron? Sure. Yep. What might be helpful for those who haven't uh, kept track of where those policies are would be to send out the current policies to all trustees with the invitation renewed okay we can we can do yeah. that again can I do something you give some more information else? that's it I have just two I want to uh, prior to this meeting we had a board meeting we had a board meeting and I would like to thank trustee Rogers dr. Rogers for sharing his parliamentary procedure mm -hmm. expertise of 30 plus years mm -hmm. and I think it was very beneficial also, I'd like to thank uh, Trustee Barshis for doing the cookie walk to, sure. in terms of support <laughs> of the staff and all that they do. And then Trustee Riddle, do you have anything to say about the Wilmette for Youth Day? Because you didn't mention well, that. The Student Government, the Leaders student government Leadership Program sponsored by the League. Because you, you were kind enough to represent us. Yes, um, and I think it's on our agenda, too. Mm -hmm. um, 
it, it was very well organized. It was at Wilmot Junior High, and a group of um, seventh and eighth graders participate, I believe, at seventh and eighth grade. Um, and they um, invited the library, the village of Wilmette, um, the um, park district, and District 39. And, and, and the Wilmette, yeah, the Wilmette, park, or Wilmette District 39. And so it was really nice, um, nicely done. Um, there were, we, Anthony attended also, and we each were in um, a group with the students. And um, my my group talked about intergovernmental agreements and how we all have to, um, you know, our dynamic of talking to each other or not, maybe not talking to each other. The Wilmette Public Library um, um, has a lot of unique characteristics and and um, Anthony prepared a really nice uh, really nice talking points that were very helpful um, for for me in the discussion they were more interested though I will say I had to kind of nudge my way into kind of letting them know about the woman public library but they were really interested in the flood um, they call them bathtubs that are going to be in the high crest or between high crest and Wilmot junior high for flood prevention and so the park district and the village really, you know, kind of talked about that. But I, I don't know if they if they had like had some type of, um, you know, articles that they had read before the night because they were really interested in those bathtubs. They kept calling them bathtubs. <laughs> <laughs> is that their? What is that the name for? The reservoirs. The, the reservoirs. reservoirs. Stormwater. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Stormwater, right? Exactly. Stormwater yeah. storage. Bathtubs but it was really nice. They're not open nicely. top. They're not actually. <laughs> yes, they're bathtub. not. Yes. <laughs> they're and underground. They, I don't know or if will we had be. any anything that <laughs> was interesting about be. that night. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was a really wonderful evening. Um, it's fast becoming one of my favorite community engagement events. Mm -hmm. um, these eighth graders are so engaged. Um, this year's group was a little bit smaller, and I think that was due in part to the consolidation of the two parochial schools and the fact that they didn't participate this year. Oh. Uh, I think we had 100 eighth graders last year, and this year it was about 63. Um, but their engagement was still very strong. Um, I think due to the smaller size of the, the class, um, and maybe this is going in part to why the, the kids weren't as engaged about the library's involvement, in their mock government, they will be, they will be representing the village and the school district exclusively. Uh -oh. Historically, the students would represent all of the governing right. bodies, so they would represent mm -hmm. the park district and the library too. But this year, uh, I think they were focusing more of their attention on the partnerships between the schools and um, and the village. That's right, they did mention they, they, they do that, that again. That, we haven't done that in over five years here because of, I think, we used to have, they used to be participating here yeah, right. when Ellen was here. Well, I wonder if, there, if, if that's the way it's going to continue into the future, if there isn't some way of bringing in what, how the library can help with whatever they're talking about that's just for the village or just for the park district, um, and, and that way bring in the use of the library. See, I think it was the number of students declined. So I think it was. That, that, right. was, that was a it's, big it's not about our partnership the, levels, because there's certainly there, a lot of talking about You just got a lot there. less yeah. kids yeah. Okay. that are participating. And I just got a footnote. We had um, Call Me American, a memoir, and he got his citizenship oh, this cool. week. Oh, I'm his Facebook great. friend. And so oh, really? That, cool. Cool. So that, that was wonderful. That was how, how long ago was that? About a year and a half. Yeah. Huh? He was, he was really so he, excellent. He, he became a citizen. Oh, oh that's terrific. Great. Do you know where he's based now? I can go look it up on Facebook. But I think he's up He's up in New England. Yeah. He's like always in New around yeah. Maine, because sure. right. that's where he went to school and that's where exactly. he got uh -huh. in the family. But yeah. Yeah. He was fascinating. Really good. So that's just a positive note of how powerful our books the are. The influence Some of the good things yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any other business? Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? I will move that we adjourn this meeting. A second. Okay, <laughs> Trustee Wolf. No, just, yes, yeah. Trustee Wolf move. moved that we adjourn the meeting at 8 12. And Trustee Fishman seconded the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it passed unanimously. <laughs>